Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you how to install a steel corner bead. I know a few of the seasoned tapers are groaning already, but I am aware that in a lot of locations you actually can't find paper faced bead. Moving on, let's get to installing these steel beads. So first, you're going to want to check your framing to see how it is. So right here I have a straight 2x4 and what I'm doing is I'm just putting it against the wall and seeing how straight the wall is. So it's not bad and thankfully I'm not going to have to do really any tweaking of the bead to get it to be nice and straight. It's good that way too. So fortunately I must have had a straight stud for this corner. So this bead here has already been cut to fit. However, let's assume you need to cut a bead. So I'm going to take a measurement here. Eighty-five and a quarter. The next thing you should do is take a look down your beads and see if there's any part that maybe you should cut off. So looking at this one, this end is bent. So it's better to cut it off of this end. Also, when you're purchasing steel beads, it's a good idea to look down the beads before you buy them because it's really common for them to be kind of bowed. You can wind up with your bead being twisted after the install without understanding why. And it's because it already had a natural twist and it just followed it without being corrected as it was installed. Cutting these is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to hook on one end of the bead. And now I'm going to look for my 85 and a quarter. And it is right here. Now you want to be careful not to snip your tape measure. If you're nervous that you're going to do that, you can just grab a sharpie and mark it. 85 and a quarter. Once I've got that, then I'm going to go right down to the end, trying to eyeball these square. And then just snip the other side. Twist it off like so. The next thing I always look for is after it's cut, it usually bends it. And so I then will bend it back in a little bit, depending on which way it needs to be bent. However, because we're nailing these on, that's actually less important. You can usually fix it with a nail. Whereas with paper beads, I always bend that because otherwise that part will stick out, making you need to build it out more. It's a good idea when installing beads to make sure that it's not pressed against the floor. You don't want it tight against the floor. You want to leave about three quarters of an inch of room at the bottom for the house to settle. So let's take a look at this bead. This thing seems to have holes about every four inches. So one, two, three, four. And yeah, I'd say it's about every four inches. So I go every second hole. So the first thing you're going to want to do is press the bead in, get it into position. And it's at that point that I start to kind of look at it and make sure that I have it kind of evenly spaced. I usually like to nail my right hand side first. I'm right handed. And what you want to look for is that you have an even space. So right there I've got, you know, about an eighth of an inch. Right here I've got about an eighth of an inch. And you can push them on tighter if you want, but what I've noticed about steel beads is the more you wrestle with them, the harder the install goes. So I'm just pressing firmly, trying to make sure it's square right there, holding it with my hand. Got my nail right there. Next, I'm going to do this one right here on the other side. So I want you guys to take note. What I did was I started my nails at a comfortable working height for me to get the first nails in. And it's fairly close to the middle of the bead. I always start in the middle and work my way one end to the other. The reason for this is if you start at the top or the bottom, what happens is that the bead doesn't lay flat and you start getting big lumps of the flange and then you're putting nails every two inches to try and flatten it out. So there's an order, a sequence to nailing these on. So the next one I'm going to do is pretty close to the top. So I've gone from here and I'm now going to go to here and I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to make sure it's about an eight there, about an eight there. And I'm going to start on this side again. I find this important too, to start on the same side each time because that way I'm sort of uniformly tweaking it over the same way every time. So now that I've done the middle and I've got one right here, I'm safe to do the top and it doesn't need much pushing because it's in place pretty well from that last one. Often at the top or the bottom of the bead, you get a spot where there is actually no hole to put the nail. So 
what you have to do is you actually just have to punch it through. This metal is super thin and you can nail through it pretty easy. Although if you're a beginner with a hammer, you may hit your fingers a little on that part. So I've got the top where I want it and now I'm gonna start nailing down. So I've got this one that was in the middle and I'm gonna go down a couple feet. And I'm just gonna push on that bead the same way I was before. Do the other side. I'm gonna go down another couple of feet. Now I'm going to do the bottom. It's not finished, but it's now in place, and I can check it. That looks good and straight. And that looks pretty good, but you know what? I kind of want it to go in a bit. It's a bit, the fill's a bit heavy right here. So it's got just a tiny bow in here, and I don't have too many nails in here, so I could quite easily push this over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap that over a little. And I saw it move, so that's good. I'm going to push on it, and I'm just going to punch right through the flange right here. Check it now. That's much better. It was just that one spot. And this is one of the reasons that I don't use steel beads. One, because I think they're not quite as strong, but two, they're a little bit fussier to get nice. I find when I do paper beads and I use the ones with the wide flange that they go on nice and straight without me having to do a lot of work. But anyways, this is now set and I can now finish nailing it off. So I'm gonna be going for about every eight inches. So that's looking pretty good now. And what we're looking for is that they're snugged on, as you can see, but I didn't smash the paper like those ones. And what else you're looking for is that the flange is sitting flat, that there's no gap. That flange needs to be tight. You can see when I tap on it, it can't move. This side is also looking good as well. I've used steel beads a good handful of times in my career, and there's two things I've learned. Number one, the sequence is critical. Start in the middle, and then go about midway from there, and then the top, then go midway to the bottom, and then do the bottom. And then at that point, you can cinch it all up. And number two is don't fight the bead. So if you're having a hard time pushing it square, it might be the framing. And it's better to have the bead not be on super tight than to fight it and watch it start buckling and when you start trying to finish nailing it off. Because when you have your bead on out of square or you're pushing on so hard, what tends to happen is this flange starts to buckle as you cinch it up and it won't sit flat. And then what you're gonna wind up with is nails and nails and nails and nails trying to hold it on. So that's the slow way of installing a steel bead. The quick way is to use a stapler. So what these are is inch and a quarter, quarter crown staples, so that means they have a quarter inch width and they're inch and a quarter wide. And this is my pneumatic stapler. So let's see how much quicker this can go. As you can see, it's a night and day difference in terms of speed. Not that I'm the fastest guy at nailing on steel beads, but I'm also not super experienced with it. I've just done it enough to know how to not struggle when I install them anymore. And that's the end of the video. 
Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. You want to support the channel? Do all those like, subscribe things. Now, it's time for me to make you guys another video. So, until the next one.